everyone, Laura K. Buzz here, and today we're back with some things I'm playing. It's a show. I tell you about things I'm playing. It's just sort of informal game thoughts that are kind of a review, but also I'm not writing all those words and paragraphs. You know how it is. So today I'm here to talk about Wilmot's Warehouse, which is an adorable little game. I have played it before. Um, I'm talking about it this week because I'm playing it again because it's just shown up on Xbox Game Pass and it reminded me, hey, this is a really charming little game that I like a lot. In Wilmot's Warehouse, you're just this happy little square sorting deliveries and orders and organising a warehouse. It doesn't sound like much. It is the kind of switch your brain off work that isn't particularly mentally engaging because usually it's for capitalism and whenever you do something for capitalism it becomes instantly less enjoyable. Working as this happy little square you get a bunch of items delivered into your warehouse uh, and you've just got to sort them. The items you get at the start of a run are randomised and the space in your warehouse is limited so you just have to kind of group things together in a way that you will remember where to find them because very soon there's going to be people that want things brought to them at the front of the warehouse and you have to on a time limit go ah i know where that is in the warehouse because i put it there and my organizational system makes sense lots of the things you get delivered to you are abstract and open to interpretation like some of them are clearly that's a snowflake that's a winter hat uh, but some of them are more, here's this red shape, maybe it's a surfing wave, maybe it's a kind of hat. A lot of the time it's up to you to interpret what the item is and where you would put it or where you would look for that, that sort of geometric shape. Also, a lot of the items fit cleanly into multiple categories and how you handle that's very personal. Something like, for example, uh, a curling iron from that sport where you do the brooms on the ice. Do you put that in the winter section? Do you put that in the sports section? Do you put that in the uh, spherical things section? Um, again, what about a, a winter hat? Would you put a winter hat in the winter section? Would you put it in the clothing section? Would you put the winter and the clothing sections near each other just so that you could put the winter hat in between the two sections and you know in between winter and hats, that's where winter hats go. The whole game is very much about your own personal mental associations more than it is strict logic. There might be a logical place to put something, the place where it most cleanly fits, but maybe that's not your gut response and you see this thing and you go, yeah, but my heart says it should be in this department. Follow your heart. This is about your mental connections and creating organised chaos that anyone else would walk into and get a little lost, but for you, it's obvious. Why wouldn't the security cameras and the menacing eyes that are also clearly security things go near the desk because they're to do with work, work is spying on you. Up at the top, you're being looked down on from above, that's where the security equipment goes. I mean, that's, that's how I organised it, but how you organise it is very much up to you. You're gonna disagree with other people about the best way to organise things, and that's kind of the fun. It's about learning how you personally hook things up in your brain. The way that the game itself works is that there are two main phases. There's one that's a bit of a timed rushed phase for a short amount of time, and then it's followed by this sort of long relaxed phase. So we'll talk about the, the rushed one first. You'll get two or three deliveries come in in a row, and when deliveries are arriving, you're given a time limit. You have a very limited amount of time to sort through everything that has arrived and it'll all be a bit jumbled together. Um, you've got to work out getting things roughly where they need to be. You probably won't have time to neatly file them away into exactly the corner you like, but you sort of throw them in the rough general area where they're not going to get in the way, but they're near the things that they need to be near. Um, then you have this follow-up phase where Customers will start asking for objects and you'll have a limited amount of time to go find them and hopefully your organisational system is good so that you know where to grab them nice and quick. And then after you've done this two or three times, you get the stock taking phase, which is the bit of the game that I love, which is, hey, we recognise that you had to sort of throw things in place because deliveries were coming in really fast and it was a bit hectic. Now there's no time limit. Completely organise the warehouse to your leisure. Maybe it's fitting things into those gaps that you didn't have time to put them into in the last couple of rounds. 
Maybe it's completely reorganizing the warehouse because you've got a new item and you're like, ah, really, that goes over with this now because now that I have these things, this sort of fits better with that, we'll make its own little new department. When I was playing this the other day, I made a Jaws department. I took the thing that looked a bit like a red wave that I had previously put in the sports department because it was a wave and that meant surfing and that meant sports department. But now it's a red wave because it's in with the shark fins and the water and the blood because, oh no, Jaws attacked someone. Now the, ray, the wave is, is red. It's a red wave now. It goes in the Jaws department. You just, you just gotta reorganize things that stuff comes in and you make new associations that feel right to you. The game has no real reward or punishment for your performance. Um, that that is, you don't have to stress too much about that. There is a reward. The faster you deliver people their items when they ask for them, you get stars. And eventually stars can be used to buy some extra space in your warehouse. Or to give yourself a dash that can be used to rush across the floor so long as you're not carrying anything. Or the ability to uh, rotate the pieces you're holding so that you don't have to get them out of the building in the same shape that you got them in. Uh, you can upgrade your carry limit so you can carry more items at one time. Um, there's no punishment for failure, it's just it takes you longer to get those upgrades because you might have to do a few extra deliveries, but don't stress about it too much. It's just a chill little game about organising things. Um, one thing I will recommend if you try picking it up, and again, it's on Game Pass at the moment, if you have that, it's worth checking out. If you play this game and then don't play it for a while and then decide you want to come back to it, you might just want to restart your run entirely and start over afresh because you're going to probably forget a lot of the mental associations that you made at the time that made sense in the moment and it may just be better to start with a fresh slate and go let's make a bunch of new associations. Wilmot's Warehouse is a game basically perfect built for my brain. I love obsessively organising my shiny Pokemon collection even with no game based reward for doing so. So a game specifically about sorting things, not based on predefined order but where I feel they should go, is a delight. It's a small, simple, and just really charming game.